Hello again, Marty from Marty's Matchbox Makeovers here. Now, a few of my subscribers have uh, messaged me and asked me to show them my uh, airbrush and how I clean it. So I thought I'd do a special video, this midweek video today, and I shall be showing you my airbrush, my compressor, and also how I clean my airbrush. I'm not pretending to be an expert on cleaning airbrushes. In fact, I know only this much about them, and that's as much as I've learned in the last two years. Uh, so I'm going to show you the way I do things, and it may not be the right way. And if you, anyone can do it better, please let me know, because I'm always open for new ideas. So without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, so this is my no-name airbrush. I call it a no-name airbrush because it has no markings on it whatsoever. It's a dual-action airbrush, and... Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Now these few parts here that I'm showing you, I don't use. This one is the lid for the colour pot, the colour pot's where you put the paint. And this large piece here is the hand grip that goes on the rear here, and it also protects the rear of the needle. It's got a small rubber seal on it, which I can only assume is there to prevent it from vibrating loose. It also has a screw thread on the inside there and what that is used for is this piece here screws into the hand grip like this <clears throat> and what that does is it limits the rearward movement of the needle. So, for example, that's full and free movement there. If you screw that in, you might get half movement. Screw it in a little bit more and you just get minimal movement. I found I don't need these bits and they slow down the cleaning process. So I put them in my bits and bobs box and set them aside. Now, as I was saying, this is a dual action airbrush. Now this is where the air line connects from the compressor and there's a little Schrader valve in there. And that is operated by pushing down on the control lever like that. Now the other option here is to drag that control lever backwards which moves the needle from out of the needle nozzle and allows the paint to flow. So with a combination of downward pressure and rearward pressure you can control the amount of air and paint that's flowing out of the nozzle. And it's not that difficult. It may sound complicated but it's not. It's really easy to get to grips with it quickly. Now I'm going to remove the needle now to show you what the needle looks like. Now this is common the needle will jam in the needle barrel there. After a couple of days, if I don't use it, there's usually a little tiny bit of paint maybe left behind and it will seize up in there. So I wiggle it with my pliers and pull it out. Now here's a close up of the needle. You can see it's got some little bits of paint on there that need to be cleaned off. The tip of it is extremely fine and very easy to bend. In fact, this one has got a very tiny bend in it, but it seems to still work okay. So I'm not too bothered about it at this moment in time. Now I'm trying to show you here that that threaded section at the back is split down the middle. And it's like a chuck. So when you put the needle in and screw this piece onto the end, because it's narrower at the, at the rear end, as you screw it on, it crimps that little tube together and holds the needle tight into the needle tube there. So you see now that's pinched up and it's moving with the trigger. If that's loosened off, it won't move. It will be free to slide. You can adjust it manually like that if you want heavy flow of paint, which I've done from time to time in some of my videos. So if you remove the needle and withdraw that spring-loaded rear section, you can remove the control lever from the body of the airbrush. And now I'm just showing you now where the control lever fits in and sits on top of that Schrader valve. 
Now I'm removing what's called the needle cap. It's the extreme tip of it, and it's got a rather unusual shape to it. Now I don't know whether that creates a vortex or, or something like that to uh, cause the paint to flow correctly. I'm not too sure, but they all seem to have that shape. Uh, here's the nozzle cap or the needle. What do they say? The needle cap on the end and the nozzle cap is this part and that's what the needle sits into it shuts off the flow of paint and then allows the flow of paint as it's moving forwards and backwards like that when you control it with your finger on that lever so it's all quite ingenious really this spring loaded section can be removed for cleaning but in all honesty, this is the first time I've removed this part in about 18 months. And I'm glad I did because there's a little build up of paint in there that I'd never knew about. So I'll probably be giving that a clean after this uh, show. This little adjuster on the front here, it was a cause of some problems for me in a couple of videos ago when the paint wouldn't flow. This must have come loose and must have been screwed up accidentally as I was handling it and it stopped the paint from flowing and I thought it was blocked. But it soon turned out that if I undid that then everything was fixed. Here I'm showing you how that Schrader valve works again. And hopefully you can now understand how it all comes together. Of course it doesn't work without a compressor so here's a little picture of my compressor now this is a very common model I've seen a lot of them on online I think it cost me about a hundred dollars Australian what's good about it is it comes with this really long hose which basically means if I'm anywhere in my hobby room I can spray something because it stretches almost all the way around a few features on this compressor is this three liter uh, air tank on the bottom and with an air tank of course you get like sustained pressure you don't get uh, waves of pressure starts and stops it's just smooth here's the pressure release mechanism if you need to empty the tank of air pressure and here's an adjuster to set up what you want your maximum air pressure to be It's a lockable control, you have to lift that outer sleeve up to turn it and then that red ring locks it into position. So once you've set your pressure using the black adjuster, you lock it into position with the red, red ring. So this is where the airline goes onto the base of the air gun, there's a little uh, O-ring in there. And this is a 3D printed little holster there that I used to keep my airbrush upright. I used to lean it up against the side of the spray cabinet, but occasionally it would fall over and spill paint everywhere. Now I operate mine between 35 and 40 PSI. Don't ask me why, I just found out that it works for me. I'm sure other people operate at lower pressures, maybe some operate at higher pressures. Here I am operating the pressure relief valve and if you look at the needle on the side on the dial you'll see it drops when I release that valve. So that's what that's for to let excess air out of the tank. This here is the last line of the fence from moisture contaminating the paint and on the underside here there's a, a sump drain plug Sometimes you get a buildup of condensation inside and you need to periodically drain it out via that sump plug. So when I'm using my brush, I always put a bit of thinners in it just to start the thing going, make sure it's not blocked. Now I'm adding a little paint. I'm doing a little practice spraying here. Usually if there's anything left over, I tip it back into the pot and reuse it and it always seems to work out quite well it doesn't there's no issues with like thinning the paint too much so now i'm going to show you what i do to clean my brush as you can see the 
colour pot is always full of product. Now I've got this tiny little bottle here with a thin nozzle on it and it's great. So what I do is periodically I decant from a larger container some of these airbrush thinners. The, I use predominantly water-based thinners, so this is the water-based thinners that I use. And I put a rubber glove on and squirt some in the bowl there, initially, just to loosen the paint off. And I've got these little squares of kitchen towel that I've cut out. I keep them on hand. And I just use a couple of them initially just to get the majority of the paint residue out and maybe clean the outside of the colour bowl there or colour pot if, if there's some spillage there. Sometimes I use uh, some makeup pads instead of the kitchen towel squares, but you've got to be mindful of the makeup pads. Some brands I've found leave fibres behind. And it can be really annoying. They can block up that very fine hole around the, the needle tip. So just pick wisely if you're going to try experimenting with some uh, makeup pads. So after the initial wipe around inside, I spray some thinners inside the bowl. Give it a shake around. Spray it out. Now there's some paint residue left in there. So I block the end off with the heel of my palm there a makeup pad and I just operate the airbrush and as you can see the air has nowhere to go but percolate up through the color pot and that just backs up if there's any paint residue in where the in the nozzle then it kind of flushes it back into the pot and now I'm doing a quick test you have to keep testing to see how clean the gun is as you're going there's a little tiny bit of taint there. So, a little bit more thinners. And look at that, that's quite clear now. So it's, uh, it's almost ready to declare it clean. Just one other thing, I always now remove the needle. You can see there's always a little bit of residue left there. So I take another square of kitchen towel spray some thinners on there and then gently rub the needle but make sure I work away from the tip because if I drag it backwards you can guarantee I will bend that tip out of shape. So there you can see there's a little bit of black paint come off of that needle but basically it's clean now and can go back into the the gun. Before I do that though just there is the needle guide. I put some thinners in the top of that Using, that's why I like this bottle with the thin nozzle because I can reach all these hard to get to areas and then I, I actually pressurize the barrel there the needle guide and squirt some right down the center of it you can see it running out of the nozzle it goes all the way through and then I put the needle back into the gun and use it like a pull through on a rifle I just push it through in and out a couple of times and if there's any paint residue left in that needle guide the, the combination of the thinners and the agitation of the needle will just flush them out. One last thing take cotton bud and make sure that the needle cap is clean. It's important you've got the needle out at this stage because you can bend the needle. Uh, check the tip of the cotton bud there you can see it's clean now uh, this is me being me sort of a little bit OCD so I'm just repeating the process just doing some random spraying there I can see it's clean uh, the needles free I'll put that in there I won't tighten it up I'll just function the airbrush a couple of times and basically the job is done. That's how I clean my airbrush. A little bit long-winded. Seems to work. If anyone's got any other tips, hints or tips, let me know. I bought one of these. Um, this is supposedly an aid to cleaning your airbrush. Basically it's a jam jar with a fancy lid. The fancy lid's got a filter in it there. So once it's screwed on, you, if you've got your thinners in the airbrush here and it 
Maybe it's turpentine if you're using enamels. It can get a little bit fumey in the hobby room. What you do is you spray it into this device and the, the thinners are kept within the jar and you don't get all woozy inhaling the vapours of the thinners. Some people would prefer not to use it. But because I use the water-based thinners, uh, I found that I actually bought it, but I don't use it because... Really, there's no vapors, or, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it's choking me or making me eyes sting, but if it did, I'd definitely be using that. So it's all to do with the type of thinners you're using. So here's another close-up of it, and as you can see, as I said before, I'd love to tell you what brand this is, because it's, it's served me well, and if someone could get the same one, I'd recommend it, but there's no markings on it whatsoever. And I've also found another use for these magnetic clamps. When I undo the, the air hose, I snap it onto one of those magnetic clamps up there to keep that out of the way so it's not dragging around on the floor, getting dust in the nozzle. And now I'm showing you what you should do periodically is remove that sump plug from the center of the tank. I've, I've got this uh, compressor running at the moment and my thumb over the end of the hose. So all the air is being blown out the bottom there. And you can see there's a bit of muck in there. Corrosion apparently builds up with inside the tank if you don't do this. And if you're going away for a week, maybe down to the beach or something in summer, you want to leave that bung out so that the tank gets aerated. And this little last line of the fence here, the, the little glass bowl, is where moisture collects. As the air is coming out of the compressor, and going to the airbrush, this device captures any moisture that might be in the air. And that bowl has to be emptied every couple of uses just to sort of make sure there's no water mixing in with the paint. So that was an insight into my compressor that I use and my airbrush. And uh, it just gave you a little bit of insight into what happens behind the scenes. So that uh, when you see like a makeover video, all you see is like the painting and the assembling. You don't see behind the scenes the cleaning up and all the preparation that has to go on to make it happen. So hopefully you found it a little bit interesting. And hopefully you learned something that maybe you didn't know before. So until next time, I'm Marty and I'm saying... Goodbye and thanks for watching. I just wipe them out like this. <laughs> Maybe I should probably have the glove on the other hand. <laughs> Hang on, cut.